Hello all of you. Today we will be discussing how to crack the ASET examination. ASET actually known as the actuarial common entrance test is the entrance exam that has to be given by the candidates who wish to appear for their actuarial papers from the Indian Institute of Actuaries. So one very important thing those candidates who wish to appear from the uh, other institutes for example the IFOA they do not require they are not required to give this exam even for IAI there are some different routes apart from uh, giving ASET that has been discussed in a separate video. So today we will be concentrating on the ASET exam only. First of all, it is a home based online exam, which means that candidates have to give this exam from their home on the browser that is provided by the institute itself. It is a safe examination browser on which proctoring is done. What is proctoring? Proctoring is that while you are giving the exam, you will be monitored throughout via artificial intelligence. Your microphone and camera will be on for the entire duration of three hours. That is the duration of the examination and you have to give the exam on that software itself. So it is a three hour exam as I said and primarily it tests uh, the common areas. It is a very basic exam and uh, the syllabus also is not very complicated. It is not very advanced. Most of it are things that all of you must have uh, done at some point in your life. Only a few topics are relatively new. Some topics are just built upon so the first section in the examination is the mathematics section. Now the mathematics section, it's for 30 marks. So of course it consists of 30% of the paper. Uh, just so you know, it's a 100 mark paper. So yes, mathematics is a 30% of the paper. And what do we have to study in this portion? Primarily it is calculus. There are some very basic algebra. For example, simultaneous equations, quadratic equations and all. There are uh, There is relations and functions which is a very important topic in the mathematics portion. And apart from that, there is matrices and vectors which is again a very big constituent of this portion. So these are some of the topics that uh, you have to be strong in for the mathematics portion. Next moving on to the statistics portion which is again another 30%. So as you all are seeing maths and stats together make up for 60% of the paper right. So now statistics is something that is uh, that contains relatively newer topics in mathematics most of the topics just get a little advanced but in statistics you will be meeting some completely new topics that were not probably not there in your plus two. So what all do we study in statistics? There are topics like probability, probability distributions, random variables, correlation regression and uh, dispersion. Dispersion of course many of uh, most of you must have done however the probability distributions part which is a major chunk of the statistics portion is something that uh, will be new for most of you. So uh, after that we have the data interpretation. Now data interpretation is again for 15 marks. So what do we do in data interpretation? It is one of the most scoring portions even though it's just 15 marks but Trust me, these 15 marks are like a gift from the institute because if you have practiced and if you know whatever uh, calculations are involved over here, which are very limited, there is not a very wide variety. It is mostly very basic. You just have to be able to understand what the question is asking. So data interpretation is a very scoring part where you will be given different kinds of charts, different kinds of graphs, tables, etc. to interpret. For example, they will give you pie charts or line graphs using which you have to answer some questions, make some interpretations, do some calculations such as the what is the percentage change or uh, which has the maximum sales which year, etc. So as you can understand data interpretation is genuinely one of the easiest parts. After that comes English which for most of the candidates ends up being the toughest part for scoring. It is not something which is tough to study because there is no end to this portion which is mainly why candidates find it very tough to score in this portion. The English portion tests your grammatical skills. It 
test your vocabulary so here you will be dealing with antonyms synonyms grammatical errors comprehension etc so the english portion is something that is completely based on just practice your vocabulary in general so uh, it is something which you build over time and not something you can study overnight right the last part is logical reasoning logical reasoning again is 10 marks which is the only remaining 10 percent of the paper and in logical reasoning we get different questions from different kinds of logical reasoning when you will study you will come to see that there are different topics inside logical reasoning there are things like clock sums calendar sums which are a little more advanced a little more complicated and there are some general questions such as uh, some family relation questions some seating arrangement questions which even without prior knowledge or even without knowing the technicalities uh, candidates can solve and apart from these there are some very general ones which are uh, just like some riddles or the logical reasoning questions that you can find in any aptitude test any aptitude test most of the entrance examinations they contain this section on logical reasoning you can have some missing sequence in this portion so uh, some coding coding and decoding where they can give you letters uh, and replace them by numbers and you have to find out what the letters or the sequence of letters represent okay so that's the uh, bird eye view of the entire paper that you have to appear for for the asset examination now all the questions that will come in the paper are going to be mcqs multiple choice questions with four options each so there will be in all 70 mcqs all compulsory you have to attempt all there is no negative marking so it is strongly suggested and recommended that candidates should answer and choose at least one option for every single question even if they are unsure a set exam is something where the institute has not provided any specific study material which will bind the syllabus all right what they do is they have given a broad view they have given broad topics and inside that topic they can pick up any portion and ask you questions so because of this sometimes it might so happen that there will be many questions for example in the english portion the vocabulary there will be times when you do not know the meaning of a word or you do not know the antonym or synonym of a word in those cases you just choose whichever option you feel is the best because there is no negative marking by chance you get the correct answer you will be awarded one mark and if you choose the wrong answer you have nothing to lose over there so make sure all of you attempt the entire paper you have three full hours to attempt the paper and usually this time is sufficient provided you have given enough number of mocks you have practiced well and you do not panic panic is something that you just cannot afford in the examination because it is an mcq exam as i said and mcq exams many a times in panic you might end up selecting the wrong option you might be knowing thinking the correct one but because of your panic you might end up pressing on the wrong option all right so make sure you do not panic read every question properly and choose one option no multiple answers are allowed only one option can be selected for every mcq now the mcqs they contain either one mark two marks or three marks 45 of the mcqs will come which have the uh, weightage of one mark 20 questions with weightage of 2 marks and 5 questions which will have a weightage of 3 marks so now how do the marks vary it varies for the maths stats portions of course it varies with the amount of calculation the sum will require many a times it since it's mcq they cannot ask you to give subjective answers however they know that for solving the sum you have to solve it somewhere on a paper so in those questions which require a considerable amount of working those questions will consist of three marks for example in english there will be some 
comprehension questions again those will consist for three marks because you are investing time in reading the paragraph in reading the uh, extract in fact not just a paragraph it's an extract which you have to read and answer the comprehension questions so those questions again are for three marks so of course it's not a very difficult exam the time required to prepare it is usually ranging to around three to four months if the candidate is completely fresh to it by fresh i mean that the candidate is not very well versed with these topics in general if the candidate's mathematics the concepts of mathematics calculus concept if they are not very crisp if they are not very um, well remembered in that case the candidate will require a good three to four months to cover the syllabus and practice enough however for students who have quite some considerable knowledge of mathematics and statistics specifically why am i saying this because this is a major 60% of the paper and this is the portion that can actually be studied english data interpretation and logical reasoning are topics uh, are which have to be uh, mastered by practice only there is no studying for this however for maths and stats you have to know concepts you have to after that you have to practice them as well so these two portions must be strong in that case two months two months is enough for appearing for the aset examination and clearing it not just appearing but also clearing it two months is enough so now coming to how to study or what strategy should be applied for studying these so now since mathematics and statistics are the most important ones of course you have to start with these i would suggest start with statistics because it contains some old topics and some new topics and uh, from the general paper pattern the questions that have come statistics portion is comparatively sometimes easier to score if you are if you have made yourself comfortable with the new topics if you are not comfortable with the new topics then you'll find it difficult otherwise it is a very easy portion to score so start with statistics and then move on to mathematics however you will realize while studying and of course if you are taking classes then that is how we also teach that some topics of mathematics are required in the statistics portions so in that case you can move on to mathematics and switch between stats and maths over your entire duration of study however these three topics data interpretation english and logical reasoning is just practice 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 and you have to practice these three continuously from day 1 till the last day how do we practice this from where do we practice we provide assignments for all three of them english there is a list of antonyms and synonyms a list of idioms phrasal verbs of course now that list contains more than 100 items so for more than 100 items per topic so you all can imagine the amount of data which is available for you to consume before the exam and it is not possible at all to do it overnight or over a week also so from day 1 you have to make it a point that you will improve your english you will improve your logical reasoning and you will practice data interpretation you have to do a variety of questions for both data interpretation and logical reasoning and you have to do a variety of reading for english so now logical reasoning again there is a set number of topics there is a set of topics that usually we see in the paper and those are the topics you can get access to logical reasoning questions from anywhere they are amply available in books in on the internet so there is a lot of questions for you to practice and it does not even take time neither does it take a lot of your mental energy every day if you sit and you practice let's say 10 logical reasoning questions it's more than enough 
over a period of 60 days you will be done with 600 questions of logical reasoning nothing more is required for the asset examination because it is not that difficult also all right so every day if you do 10 lr questions <coughs> it's more than enough more than enough genuinely even for english even if you do 10 words a day or let's say 15 words a day it is again more than enough all right it's very easy to improve your vocabulary every day if you just learn let's say 10 words start with few start with four or five words a day learn their antonyms their synonyms start using them in sentences until and unless you use the words which you are learning in sentences trying to make use of them in conversation till then you will not retain those words so it's very important that every time you learn a new word make sure you form three four sentences and just think of scenarios where this word can be used then your brain tends to retain it faster and for longer okay data interpretation again there are some uh, six seven forms of data interpretation which you have to know how to read how to interpret and after that you're good to go all you have to do is practice in this section particularly and of course for the maths and stats portion as well but data interpretation involves a lot of calculations so you have to be comfortable using a scientific calculator in the ASET examinations in the ASET examination the institute has given a list of calculators that are allowed for sitting in the exams you can uh, see that list on their website one of the most common ones used for the entire actuarial study journey is fx82 es plus this calculator is the most commonly available and the most commonly used calculator for actuarial students okay now apart from this uh, we provide classes that is 75 hours recording it's a 75 hours course as i said it is not a very long course it is just 75 hours recording plus live doubt classes and assignments assignments along with study material for study material for topics like English where a lot of data has to be consumed and you might not know where you can get access to such questions so this is what we provide and outside this we also take mock examinations under the proctoring method just in the same environment that you will be giving your ASET exam in the same environment we will take your mock exams as well one very 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 important thing for us uh, for clearing your ASET is that you must practice at least 10 to 12 previous terms papers to get a hang of what kind of questions actually come you have to practice 10 to 12 previous terms papers and out of these 10 to 12 papers i would suggest that at least five papers you time yourself because these three hours these three hours even though they are sufficient but they are only sufficient when you do your paper well when you manage your time well without proper time management you cannot complete the paper in three hours so it's important that at least five papers you give while timing yourself and of course when you will be giving the mock exams you will have to strictly abide to the time limit and you have to abide to the proctoring method as well so that is separate i'm saying apart from that five papers okay so i guess that's it i hope all of you clear your exams with flying colors all the best to all of you. Thank you.